Prince Harry is a man who's seen frontline action in Afghanistan not once, but twice. He's a qualified Apache pilot. And he's used his experiences to help his fellow comrades suffering mentally and physically from their commitment to Queen and country. But where did it all start? Like every royal, Prince Harry was exposed to the armed forces from an early age. From the moment a toddler toddles through Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, Sandringham or Kensington Palace, there is the military. It feels military in any of those places. So Harry entering the military wasn't a huge surprise. It all began for him in 2006 when he enrolled at Sandhurst. He then spent the next decade maturing under the protective wing of his armed forces family. We all noticed that young Prince Harry, who was often filmed falling out of nightclubs at two or three o'clock in the morning, that gradually lessened. Yes, I know there was a famous occasion um, before he deployed on the helicopter tour when um, he probably did a couple of things he would rather not have done. But frankly, that's the last we've seen of that kind of um, youthful misbehaviour. After passing out from Sandhurst and joining the Household Cavalry's Blues and Royals, his early career did have some disappointments. I have decided today that Prince Harry will not deploy as a troop leader with his squadron. Unfortunately, I've come to this the media speculated so incessantly and so accurately and by about the time when we would have to take a final decision on whether to deploy him or not, they had worked out where he'd be, what his unit would be doing, what vehicle, what sort of vehicle he'd be in, and what he'd be wearing. His personal reaction was one of real frustration and some anger. Uh, I think he came up with the famous line, I haven't dragged my sorry ass through Sandhurst for a year not to be allowed to go on operations. So the frustration was huge, which was why I and others were determined that we would get him on operations just whenever we could. Lord Dannett came good. He gathered all the news editors to a meeting at the Ministry of Defence. An agreement was struck to send Prince Harry to Afghanistan under a media blackout. It lasted for 10 weeks before breaking. Prince Harry revelled in the relative anonymity of a distant war zone. To be honest with you, here's one nice thing, not knowing what, what's in the paper and what rubbish people are writing. So uh, just about in general. Um, so yeah, it's very nice to be out of, sort of, out of touch from everything. Um, that is probably the nicest bit about this place. The breaking of the media blackout meant Prince Harry had to be brought home, but he tasted frontline action and wanted more. And I can remember him sitting with a gin and tonic that I'd, that I'd given him and, and his shoulders were slightly slumped. So we discussed uh, that day what other possibilities there might be for going back on operations. And I said I really couldn't see us being able to replicate the media blackout that we had. And I thought that the only way he could possibly get back on operations was within the anonymity of a helicopter cockpit. So what about learning to fly? By the end of 2008, a new chapter was beginning in Prince Harry's military career. He took General Dannett's advice and trained as an Army Air Corps helicopter pilot. It meant that by 2012, Prince Harry, now a qualified Apache co-pilot gunner, achieved his ambition of getting back to Afghanistan. It's a weird reality being stuck in Bastion. For me, I hate it being stuck here. I'd much rather be um, out the lads and in a PB. Um, the last job was, was, for me personally, better. This tour was successfully completed in January 2013. It was to be his last frontline tour. But Harry had a new project in his sights. A visit to Colorado in 2013 to see the Warrior Games inspired him to create something similar in Britain. And hopefully bringing what essentially is a fantastic idea here and bringing it to the UK. And um, why not? In September 2014, the first ever Paralympic style Invictus Games was born. Whoever's idea it was to put me here was. <laughs> yeah. By his military background, he has lent authority, value, and reality to the Invictus Games by forcing people to consider the external effects of being taken out of the military. So it's not just a sporting competition, it's a sporting competition with a purpose and with design. The Invictus Games is a game changer. Right, I've, I've just seen the people that I've, that I've trained with, that I've trialled with, that I've competed with, I've just seen their lives transform completely in front of my eyes because of the power of sport and, and being back in that, that team environment and having that opportunity again to wear a uniform and represent your country, which you think when you leave the military has been taken away from you. The Invictus Games continues to go from strength to strength thanks to Prince Harry's drive and determination. 
Although he left the military in 2015, his commitment to veterans and their welfare means he'll never be far from his armed forces family.